Hello Makeup Floyd, I'm Trin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a 14 hour wear test testing out the Natasha Denona High Glam Foundation. This is actually the third time I've been filming this video because at the end of the night I've been so exhausted in such a just sour mood that I didn't want to come back on camera and do the update. So this is my third impression using this as a powder foundation so I will share a little bit of my thoughts as we go along just as how it's been going but then we'll do the wear test and I will actually for sure do an update at the end of the video like same just so y'all can see so I'm just getting the high glam powder foundation pulled up on my phone I will zoom y'all in give this video a like and subscribe to my channel So I have mine in the shade R4, which is a fairly good shade match for me. I do have powder, I have cream and like, and cream, blush, and bronzer. Those are words. I'm going to use my own powder puff today, which desperately needs to be cleaned, because I have used the poof that has come with the foundation for the first two wear tests, and I just don't like it. It is so firm and the edges are so sharp to where it just does not, it, 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 it hurts. Like using this on the under eyes to set it, I don't know, I think maybe for vacation I will actually bring an under eye setting powder so I'd have two powders with me but this goal really is to be that I don't bring an actual foundation and that I just stick with a powder because I am only bringing a carry-on and my backpack with me so I don't have a lot of space and I just I need to be more resourceful with what I am bringing so it wasn't the purpose of buying this foundation let me read you the description I'm all over the place Following the success of her High Glam Concealer Sensation, Natasha Denona introduces her High Glam Powder Foundation. This blurring flex tech hybrid powder delivers a poreless, oil-controlled, perfected second skin finish while caring for your skin, and it's available in 36 shades. Let's just glance at the shade range real quick. It's not bad. Now, I am a light skin girly, so I can't really speak for people of a deeper complexion. But just as my first glance, just as from my POV, I don't think it's bad. So, if you have a deeper complexion, look at this, look at the skin, look at the shade range, <laughs> and let me know your thoughts. Because I, I just, I, I just don't have experience it's just not my skin tone but this with my normal poo that I just buy just on Amazon is looking pretty dang good it has nearly covered up my blush and bronzer which I'm not mad at I don't think I knowing this I don't think I'd bring a cream blush and bronzer with me on vacation and just take the powders because then I'd have to go over with powders anyways so it's not bad um I really do like the coverage. I am definitely mad. I will also say it didn't happen this morning, but I've been dealing with pilling with my skincare. I need to Google what's up with that because I don't know what's going on. But I didn't have it today, but I had it a couple days ago and the foundation, it just wasn't good. Now I will say that my nose has been running more frequently often the past couple days I had like a good week and week and a half where I did have to deal with a runny nose and it is back in full force so I am anticipating a lot of wear down around my nose even as I do the rest of my makeup I am anticipating a little bit of wear down right here of where my glasses sit my glasses don't touch my skin right there but sometimes as I am like adjusting them on my nose and such occasionally they will hit my face and I get a little bit of wear down so hopefully that does not happen today. Primer, I did use the Elf Liquid Poreless Putty Primer, if I didn't mention. I don't think, I, I haven't tested this, and I don't want to test this, but I feel like a sticky gripping primer just wouldn't be a good idea with a powder foundation, just because I feel like I would just pat it on 
and then it would only stick right there and it wouldn't really blend. I have tried this just as a setting powder with a brush and you really don't get coverage when you use a brush. Maybe the brushes that I'm using are too fluffy but that's just my experience. I've definitely used this, this powder with your trusty powder poof. Not the one that comes with it, but just your trusty one on the side. So I will finish the rest of my makeup. We will reevaluate when everything is done, and I'll be right back. Back with my full face makeup done. I did use a shimmery blush. It has a slight sheen to it. It's not super intense. It's the NYX Butter Melt Butter Melt Blush in the shade You Know Butter. So there is a slight sheen to my skin, but it's not overt. Didn't use a high layer because I wanted to see how my oils go through. But overall, my skin is looking great. It's looking so good. I just love... I just love it. Can I scrunch? Can I scrunch? I don't really have wrinkles. Scrunching doesn't do anything. But I think my skin looks pretty damn good. I like the coverage that it gave. Powder products. I mean, duh. Powder products applied beautifully on top of it. I didn't have any issues. Even for a powder that was really close to my skin tone, I still feel like my concealer was heightened a little bit. It wasn't covered up to be like super dark. So I enjoy it. I think if I used a really bright concealer, it would look a little too weird. But even as an under eye setting powder, like it looks amazing. I do think my skin is pretty blurred. So. I like this so far. It is 9.24 right now. I'm going to do yoga. Hopefully it doesn't... I'm worried about, about yoga today for some reason. I'm worried about yoga every day. I'm like, am I going to have to put in effort today? I hope not. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go do yoga. I'm going to check in around 12.05, I think, tomorrow morning. So I'll see you then. Day is done. Okay, let's remove the glasses and holy nose indentation. Oof. Oof. Okay, let's evaluate. I am shiny. I am so shiny. But you know what? If I would have touched up with a little bit of powder, this looks like this kind of looks trendy glass skin kind of like i think this is how some people want to look when they first apply their makeup very glowy very luminous very dewy and it doesn't look bad like my nose yeah there's some wear down i had to blow my nose a lot at work today okay allergies come at me but overall the makeup doesn't look bad at all it really really doesn't the blush is still strong it's not about the blush i mean i look freaking greasy i do to me i look really greasy but i think if this is the look that you're going for i think you'd like it i think this is the makeup that people want when they first apply their makeup i think this is the trendy makeup look but i feel like if I brought the compact to work, touched it up with a little bit of powder, I think I'd be looking stellar. I mean, I really can't see past the greasiness. My nose is a mess. See that? My nose is a mess, but I wear glasses, so we can forgive it. But the rest of my skin looks very good. Like, this looks better than some of my liquid foundations. Got a little bit of something going on right there, but blowing my nose, blowing my nose. So let me zoom out. And we'll talk. Okay, so what do I think after three days of using the Natasha Denona High Glam Powder Foundation? I've done this three times now. I've only done this very... I've done like this application part of the video three times. We're doing the wrap up with this foundation. I really like it. I think it's really good. I think it's a good shade match. You know what? I'm oily. I'm greasy. But it's not bad. I mean, what time is it? What time is it? It is 12.06 in the morning. Put this on around 9.20. Okay? It's been on for a long freaking time. 14 hours. So I think for 14 hours, this foundation looks really good. Honestly, I would compare it to my About Face foundation. In terms of, like, how good it looks. And how... Minus the pores to show... I thought it was a little bit of patchy. Patchy is right there. But... Zoom down, you can't tell. From far away, you can't see the imperfections. From far away, 
I think that this looks absolutely st stellar. So I want to thank you all so much for watching this short little video. Let me know your thoughts on the powder foundation, if you've tried it, if you want to try it. I was wondering if I could dupe it out in my collection and I did a test of that and it wasn't worth me talking about it. So I'll throw it in right here. I wondered if the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Instant Wrinkle Blurring Press Powder would be like a do for the National Nino High Glam and it's not. My brain was like, ooh. Do I? Do I already own this powder? Is this? No. No, I don't. This is $20. This is $55. This is very expensive. This is a very expensive powder. This is my most expensive foundation. <laughs> it is, but I kind of think it's worth it. I kind of think it's worth the $55. I really think I do. For the cover, the fact that it's a powder foundation, the fact that it's a lot easier to touch up, considering regard regardless, like, I'm freaking oily. Like, I am. I am shiny. But for having super oily skin, end of 14 hours, I think it looks pretty damn good. So thank y'all so much. As always, have joy and bye!